In this lesson, we're looking at residuals and residual plots. So let's go ahead and get started. What exactly is a residual? It is the difference between the observed Y value from the scatter plot and the predicted Y value from the regression equation line. It is also uh, the vertical distance from the actual plotted point to the point on a regression line. And you can think of a residual as how far the data falls from the regression line. So let's take a look at this graph here. The regression line would be right here. So we're looking at how far away uh, that the data is from this regression line. And so the regression line is also called the line of best fit or fit line. And you have your predicted values. Those are the points on the line. And then you have your actual values. Those are your points not on the line. So we could say the residual is that space right here between your line of fit and the actual um, point there. The equation that we use is actual value minus the predicted value. So we're taking those two values and subtracting them. Also, when you have a positive residual, um, the points would be above that line of regression or line of best fit. If you have negative residuals, the points would be below the line of the line of best fit or the regression line. Let's take a look at example one here. We want to calculate the residual and we're going to do step one, which is to calculate the predicted values by substitute substituting the given values of X into the given equation. And so I have this long equation here, F of X or this long function. Since F of X is equal to negative 0.11688X squared and so forth. And so basically what I want to do, I want to take my X values, which are the numbers um, one through nine or my independent values and plug them in to get my predicted value. And so I will plug in one here and I would do one square and then multiply that by negative uh, 0 0.1168. I would basically use order of operations. So plug in X, uh, do your exponent and then multiplication. And then you would also plug in X here as well and use order of operations. And so the first value I would get is 9.4. If I plug in one, if I plug in two, I would get, um, so I would do two to the second multiply by negative 0 0.11688 plus 2.5355 uh, times 2. So again, just plug in x. And I already uh, have the answers here because it will take quite a long time. I don't want the video to be a half hour long plugging in these values and then getting through the rest of this lesson. And so basically, to calculate your predicted value, you will simply take your x values and plug it in to the equation that you're given. Now let's take a look at step two. We want to subtract the actual value or your given Y values minus the calculated predicted Y values. And so our actual values are our Y values right here, 9, 12, 14, and so forth. And our predicted values are, of course, what we got when we plugged in our X values. And so basically we want to subtract these two columns and once we do that, do that, we will actually have the residuals. And so 9 minus 9.4, that gives me negative 0 0.4. Subtracting 12 minus 11.6 is 0 0.4. 14 minus 13.6 is 0 0.4. And just filling in the rest of this chart here. All right. Subtract 19 minus 0 0.8 and 21 minus 20.3. So these are our residuals here in black. All right, so for example two, I would like for you to calculate the residual on your own for the function f of x is equal to 1.3x plus 9.2. And I left the steps up here for you. So go ahead and pause the video and see if you can calculate these residuals on your own. All 
All right, so we have the answers here. Go ahead and pause the video and check your answers. I hope you got them correct. Now let's take a look at residual plots. So after calculating your residuals using your line of fit or your regression line, you can recreate what is called a residual plot where your x values would still be the same um, from your original scatter plot, but the y values would be the new uh, corresponding residuals that you found. So after doing that, um, you can look at the distribution of the residuals and it'll help you determine how well that that line of fit or that regression line actually describes the data. So for the first graph here, we see that the, the dots or the points are, are random meaning they're scattered, but they're tight around the x-axis here. So this means that the line used to model the data fits very well. This middle graph here, uh, if the residuals about the x-axis are random, so again, they're, they're scattered, but they're loose around the x-axis. So you can see here, they're a little further spread out from your x-axis. So this means that the line used fits the data well, um, well, no, it fits the data, but it is weak. And then last, if your points are not random, meaning they follow some type of pattern, it does not fit the data well. And so you can see that um, like this last graph here, it kind of follows a, a U shape, but it, it's not random. It has a pattern, so it does not fit the data well. So just to recap, random and tightly packed fits the data well, random but loose, fits the data, but it is a weak model, uh, not random. It does not fit the data well. So for example three, we're going to actually graph our own residual plots here using uh, the two models. Uh, the first model, uh, the one I did, and that second model was the one that you could try on your own. That first model, of course, was a quadratic model because we have this x squared. And the second model is a linear model because you just have your your x there. So I'm just going to plot the points from our original uh, uh, graph using our x values and our residual. So I'm going to plot 1, negative 0 0.4. So 1, negative 0 0.4. And let's put it in black or red here. All right. Then I plot 2, 0 0.4 here. Uh, 3, 0 0.4, 4, negative 0 0.3, right here, 5.2, 6, 0, 7, 0, 8, uh, negative 0 0.8 here, and 9, last one, 0 0.7, so about here. Now let's graph or plot the points for the second one. Right. And so I'm going to do purple. I'm going to plot 1, negative 1.5 right here. Oh, spot here. 2, 2.2, 3.9, 4, 0.6, 5, 1.3, 6.1, 707 7, about here 8 0 0.6 or negative 0 0.6 and 9 is 0.1 so I've graphed both now it says which model is a better fit of the scatter plot I'm going to say that quadratic model uh, the residuals are smaller and they are closer to the x axis and their sum is closer to 0 and so just looking at this plot here, we can see that um, for our x axis is uh, random, but it is tightly fit around the x axis. And so the quadratic model is a better fit. For this example here, we want to analyze what we see about the scatter plots and their corresponding residual plots. So for this first example here, we can see that this model, the model used for the scatter plot appears to be a good fit because the residuals are scattered but tight. So they're random, but they're, they're tight. 
So the second one here, it is not a good fit because we have that curved shape. So anytime you have a curved shape or, or some type of pattern, uh, the residual plot would not be a good fit. For this last example here, I would like for you to try this problem on your own. Go ahead and analyze the scatter plot and its corresponding residual plot. All right, so for this first one, it is a bad fit because the residual shows a curve pattern. And for the second one, it is a good fit, but it is uh, a weak model. So hopefully you got these two correct. If not, go back, uh, maybe rerun the video and look at uh, the patterns for the residual plot there. All right, we've reached the end of our lesson. I wanna thank you for learning with me. Some related videos are two-way frequency tables and describing data using center shape and spread. If you haven't already, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. And once again, I wanna thank you for learning with me.